Welcome to Art That Plays and Prays. Ginger here. In this video, I'll review Derwent Intense Pencils, which are essentially wax pencils with pigment-based inks. Derwent classifies Inktense as a watercolor product, although the vibrancy of Inktense shows off totally different properties compared to regular watercolor pencils. You'll notice a difference right away because the ink-based colors become more brilliant once activated with water. In this video, I'll create swatches and test how well Inktense performs when you layer or blend. Derwent claims that the paint is permanent once dry, but is that true? I'll make a test and see if there really is stability in the dried up pigments. But before I proceed, let me run through the basics first. Derwent Inktense pencils are made in the UK. They have 4mm lead cores and the thick barrel has a nice weight and balance as well on my hands. The wood casing is properly labeled using a readable font size which is great for people like me with poor eyesight. You can find both the color codes and color names on the barrel because Inktense pencils are available for individual purchase. But based on experience though, not all countries have retailers that sell open stocks so this feature may be useless for you if single pencils are not available in your country. Amazon Canada has a few colors for sale, but they're quite pricey at almost $5 a pencil and shipping is another $6. So essentially you're buying a single color for $11, which is completely ridiculous. It's not cost effective. So personally, I wouldn't even consider buying open stock. Now, while I'm preparing my swatches, I want to talk about light fastness, which is a big thing for me. I tried to study the light fastness ratings of Derwent pencils. But it got really confusing because uh, the product packaging itself doesn't provide the info. So I had to scour the internet and do my own research. It got confusing because there seems to be two different versions of the color chart. One version showed that only 58% of the 72 ink tense pencils are very good to excellent light fastness. However, there's another version of the ink tense chart that showed a different story. It says that a more impressive 87% of the 72 colors have very good to excellent light fast ratings. And that's really a big discrepancy, like from 58% to 87%. Now, this made me wonder if the company recently changed their formulation to improve the stability and UV resistance of their pigments. So now the big question is, which light fastness chart do we believe? The answer was not readily accessible. So for me, I'd rather err on the side of caution. For the sake of this review then, I'm going to lean on the conservative side and assume that the chart with poor performance is the one that's accurate. Because who knows what set you might end up buying from retailers, right? Even if Derwent improved their formulation, but if you ended up purchasing a store's old stock, then you'd be dealing with low light fastness ratings in your artwork. Anyway. Derwent follows the blue wool scale that measures pigments on a scale of 1 to 8, with 8 being the best. That's the most light fast level. And of the 72 piece 10 set that I have in this review, only 36 colors have excellent light fastness ratings of 7 and 8. That's exactly 50%. If we include the 6 pencils that are rated very good, then we have 58.3% colors that have the likelihood of retaining their original pigments over time. All the rest are poor quality, with ratings of 2, 3, and 4. But I must give you a word of caution. We, we shouldn't put our entire faith on these rankings, because there is a caveat to this that most people are not aware of. Um, blue wool and ASTM standards are hinged on the condition that you're, you store your paintings indoors, away from sunny windows, and fully protected behind museum-grade uh, UV filtering glass. If you strictly follow those conditions, then these 42 intense colors with high light fastness rankings can survive somewhere between 50 to 100 years. But of course, most of us common folks, we don't really follow these normal conditions of display and we end up putting our art either uh, we expose it to direct sunlight or put it to in areas of high humidity or to bright interior lighting which by the way can also accelerate damage your normal lights at home those light bulbs and lamps and all that they, that can still degrade your art in that case we can expect our artwork to bleach out anywhere between six weeks to one and a half years only and that's assuming we're only using those intense pencils with light fastness ratings of six to eight light fastness is really very important quality which 
a professional artist must consider if we don't want our work to color shift or to crack, peel, or lose their gloss. Now, watercolors and colored pencils are generally not light fast, not like acrylic or oil paintings because of the difference in the pigment binders used. Um, for example, oil um, can encase pigments more thoroughly. That's why oil paints are able to fend off the damaging impact of UV rays better than watercolor. Light fastness suffers even more when you dilute the water, the colors with water. I mean, um, because now you have less dense pigments on your substrate, right? Now, Derm Dermot also admits this in their website that their 87% light fast ratings will change and can change once water is added. But who doesn't activate intense colors with water? Yeah, so uh, we cannot hold on to that 87% light fast ratings anyway because you have to put water in your in pencil marks. Uh, now, it doesn't matter really what brand you have. Yellows, reds, and violets usually have the most number of inferior pigments. We call them fugitives. Those colors are more prone to lose their tints rapidly. They become dull. So if you search up Derwent's light fastness chart, you'll notice that most of the colors that are rated poor, the ones with threes or fours, they're mostly the shades of red, yellow, orange, and violet, like uh, crimson, like cherry, poppy red, and others like that. The most brilliant colors tend to be the least light, light fast, and that's a sad trade-off, right? It's not... It's sound advice then to kind of steer clear of those colors or to use them sparingly. But then you'll end up with pretty drab art with a limited color palette. That's a trade-off. Now let me explain what I've been doing with this color swatch. As you can see, the dry colors in the left column here are nothing extraordinary. They can easily be mistaken as any regular colored pencil from a lesser known brand. But once activated with a wet brush, magic just happens. It's like you enter a new dimension and you suddenly see vibrant, transparent inks on the page. Dermant ink tents really does show off highly saturated pigments, right? Now, uh, according to the Dermant website, uh, the painted ends on the pencil barrel should match the washed out color rather than the dry pencil lead course. And that means that the painted end on the pencil, um, the uh, identification here, that's what your art should look like once you've applied water to your drawings. But how true is that claim? And that's what I want to look at. Uh, take a look at my second column in my swatch. Do you think it accurately represents the paint labels on the pencil? To be honest, I don't think so. so check out the this burnt orange. The pencil label matches the dry markings on the left and not so much the wet paint on the right. But if you compare fuchsia, the opposite is true. The paint on the pencil barrel leans more closely to the to the water activated one on the right rather than the dry swatch on the left. Now jump forward to a uh, color lagoon here and you'll see that the pencil resembles the dry swatch again just like the burnt orange and the same is true with green aquamarine. So these inconsistencies um, you know that, that can be very misleading for people like me who don't like making swatches and would rely heavily on the pencil IDs only. So bottom line is, if color accuracy is a big deal for you, then I recommend that you just create your own swatch. It's safer that way. At this point, I want to test the blending of these ink tense pencils. Uh, one thing I love about Derwent is its versatility. You can play around with different blending styles. You can layer dry colors as if you're using colored pencils, then pass a wet brush on top and mix inks. If you want to top up with more pigments, you can apply dry pencils on wet paper like what you see me do here. You can rub or layer any which way you want and not worry about creating mud because the Derwent uh, colors, they're translucent. They're not as opaque as Japanese Gansai paints. Two colors can mix nicely, but what if you want to mix three colors? Can you do that? I'll use the deep indigo and green aquamarine that's already here in my swatch then i'll just add a third color uh, this sherbet lemon as you can see you can play around with the pigments whichever way you want you can add a little water or add a lot to create blooms backgrounds or flow marks if you like that kind of texture derwent ink tense is water soluble as you've already seen but 
if you're not careful and you don't go easy on your dry pencil scrubbing, you might see remnants of the pencil marks that didn't dissolve even after you've already soaked them in water. That is a common problem with this product. So make sure you, you apply the dry pencil sparingly and to dissolve every bit of pigment you see. Because if you don't dissolve completely, those remnants will reactivate when you pass water over them again. Now, uh, Derwent claims that their vivid ink-like washes are permanent when dry. They even wrote it on the back of their tin packaging. It reads here, once dry, ink tense becomes permanent and can be worked over without affecting the layers of vivid color. But is that true? Can we really layer more colors on top of dry paint without smudging or lifting the underpainting? To test this, I waited for the bottom three, this three middle swatches here, I waited for them to fully dry. Now, suppose I want to add some details to a background wash, but I made a mistake and I want to lift that paint off. See what happens? Not only did I remove the wet red paint, I ended up lifting the underpainting as well. Keep in mind the tan color was already fully dried a while ago and if Derwent's claims were true, the tan should already be permanent by now. But based on this result, it doesn't seem that way. Now let's pretend I want to draw designs on my background and activate it with water. Can I do that without disturbing the yellow background here? I'm trying to be extra careful in filling in the space and so far, it's working well. Just for comparison, I'll, I'll draw the same heart on the right side where the cadmium yellow is still very damp. Actually, this is what you call a dry on wet technique. It's something you can do. You can take a dry pencil and draw on a wet surface and leave it that way if you like. But for the sake of this test, I'll activate the pigments with water and see what happens. You, you may not be able to see it well, but the pigment is running a bit. The edges are not so sharp and that's not the effect I'm aiming for. So let me touch this up some more. Okay, for this last swatch test, I'm drawing tan lines on this dried up chocolate paint. When I pass over these lines with a wet brush, my assumption is that I'll only get tan pigments. But watch, it, it's obvious here that my pigments blended. I, I didn't just get tan, but a mixture of tan and brown. That's, that just means that the chocolate paint wasn't permanent. It reactivated. Let me do that over again. This time I don't have any other color to add. I'll just run water in this dried up dark chocolate. Do you see what's happening here? The paint is reactivating when it's not supposed to. Mm. Bottom line is Derwent's claim isn't true. The paint is not permanent once dry. Oh. Maybe there are specific conditions that must be met to achieve that level of permanence, but what those conditions are, it's not really clear to us users. So to avoid unwanted surprises, I'd advise that you spray a workable fixative on your art before you go back in and add layers of new pigments. That's a safer way to do it. Okay, next I want to test how Derwent Inktense adheres to cloth. Uh, because... If you look at the back of the tin, it shows here that you can use ink tents on fabric. Derwent ink tents is suitable for textile artists who want to paint their own designs on fabric, then sew these art pieces into quilts. You can also use uh, ink tents to paint on throw pillows or t-shirts for personalized creations or whatever. I'm not much of a fabric artist, but I wanted to test these pencils to check out what more they can do. When painting on fabric, it's best to use a textile medium to help you blend colors and to improve the adhesion of the pigments on cotton or muslin, silk, or any cloth. Textile medium also prevents the paint from running or bleeding through, making your art washable. So before painting with ink tents, you can coat your fabric with a layer of textile medium first. Now, it's not really my goal to create fabric art in this video, so I'm not applying any textile medium as base coat. I'm not going to heat set with an iron either. I just want to show you how versatile ink tents is that you can actually use it on other surfaces besides paper. It's a medium worth considering for fabric related crafts. And as you can see, applying dry color and dry cotton is a bit of a chore. It's way easier to work on damp cloth. And I mean damp only, not dripping, soaking wet. 
You can also blend with a wet brush or dip the tip of the pencil directly in water before applying the pigments on the fabric. I'll check out what happens when you don't have fabric media. The paint bleeds through. Okay. All right, moving on to the last test. I looked through my old set of Derwent ink tents and noticed a few seemingly off-center cores here. Check out these green pencils. There's more wood on one side and more lead on the opposite side. I wanted to see how off-center the leads are and test if this will continue to pose a problem for me as I sharpen. So let's sharpen. I, I want to also test how fragile the cores are. Do they break as easily as Prismacolor leads? Let's find out. Okay. I'm not going to be gentle with these pencils. I'll crank my, my sharpener the usual normal way I do with my uh, graphites. Now let's check these out. With one try only, I managed to get a sharp point in these pencils. None of them broke. None are wobbly either. Everything's just perfect. Okay. So let me sum up everything that we've discovered about ink tens. Let me tell you the good stuff first. The leads are sturdy enough to take abuse from a sharpener. The cores can be sharpened to a fine point. Okay, that's good. Colors are vibrant once activated by water. That's good. And you can use various blending techniques like dry on dry, dry and wet, wet on dry, or wet on wet. The, the possibilities are diverse. You can apply pigments even on fabric. And that's great news. Uh, the barrels are sufficiently thick with a good weight that sits well in your hands. And the labels are clear and readable somehow. So those are the good points. Now for the bad, first and foremost, the price. Derwent products are not cheap, whether they're in sets or as individual pencils. Ink tents may be available open stock, but the price per pencil is also prohibitive, especially for us on a budget. Ink tents may be nicely packaged in sturdy tins, but the cover doesn't sit snugly. At least mine didn't. Uh, the cover comes off easily, so I have to be extra careful that the pencils don't spill out. Another con is the light fastness ratings, which are not the best. Also, the paint identification on the pencil barrel on the tip is not an accurate representation of the actual colors of the dissolved pigments. And last but not least, the pigments are not permanent when dry, and that's not also the Derwent, Derwent claims are not true. So there you have it, folks. I've given you a, on a, an honest and comprehensive review as much as I can. All these opinions are my own and may not match your actual experience with Derwent. But I bought this set myself out of my own pocket. It's not sponsored, so I hope you found my assessments unbiased. That's it, okay? Ginger here from Art That Place and Praise. Please like and subscribe and see you again next time.